You're bleeding. Every second counts. There's a hole in you that wasn't there five minutes ago, and the world isn't coming to save you. No ambulance, no ER, no sterile operating room with a trauma surgeon scrubbed in and ready. Just you, whoever shot you, and the very real possibility that you're going to die in the next hour if you don't move fast. The bullet doesn't care about your plans. It doesn't care that you were careful, that you avoided the gangs near the old grocery store, that you kept your head down. Physics happened. Metal traveled through your body at somewhere between 800 and 3,000 feet per second, and now there's a tunnel of destroyed tissue that's leaking the fluid you need to stay conscious. You've got maybe three problems happening at once. You're bleeding, you're going into shock, and if you survive the next six hours, infection is going to try to finish with the bullet started. First priority is stopping the external bleeding, because you can have all the survival skills in the world, but they don't work when your brain runs out of oxygen. If it's an extremity, a limb, you need pressure and you need it now. Don't waste time being delicate. Strip whatever fabric you have, your shirt, someone else's shirt, doesn't matter if it's clean, because infection is a tomorrow problem and bleeding out is a right now problem. Wad it up and press it directly into the wound. Not near it, into it. It's gonna hurt in a way that makes you want to stop, but pain means you're still alive enough to feel it. If the bleeding soaks through the first layer of fabric, don't remove it. That first layer is already clotting, already starting to form a seal with your body. Add more material on top and keep pressing. You need sustained pressure, ideally 10 to 15 minutes of it, which feels like an eternity when someone might still be shooting at you or you're hiding in a collapsed building. But this is the difference between walking away and being found three days later by someone who needs your boots more than your corpse does. For extremity wounds, elevation helps. Get that arm or leg above your heart. Gravity is free and it works. If you're losing blood fast, really fast, and it's spurting in rhythm with your heartbeat, you've hit an artery and you're in the bad place. This is when you need a tourniquet and you need it two minutes ago. Belt, rope, torn strips of clothing twisted tight, anything that can constrict. Apply it two to three inches above the wound between the wound and your heart. Tighten until the bleeding stops completely, not slows, stops. Write down the time you applied it on your skin, on the tourniquet itself, anywhere, because if someone finds you later, they need to know how long it's been. After two hours, the tissue starts dying from lack of blood flow, but dead tissue is still better than dead you. Torso wounds are where things get complicated and terrifying. Chest or abdomen, you can't tourniquet your torso. If the bullet went into your chest and you're having trouble breathing, if there's a sucking sound when you inhale, you've got a pneumothorax, an open chest wound. Air is getting into your chest cavity where it absolutely should not be. Your lung is trying to inflate, but it can't because the pressure is wrong. You need to seal that wound immediately. Plastic works best. Credit card, plastic bag, duct tape if you've got it, even the wrapper from an MRE. Tape it down on three sides only, leaving one side open. This creates a one-way valve. Air can escape when you exhale, but it can't get sucked back in when you inhale. It's crude, but it works. And crude but works is the entire philosophy of apocalypse medicine. Abdominal wounds are a nightmare. If you can see intestines, do not push them back in. Cover them with the cleanest damp cloth you can manage and try to keep them moist. The instinct is to shove everything back where it came from, but you'll introduce more contamination and cause more damage. Just cover and protect. This is also when you accept that without real surgical intervention, without antibiotics, the survival rate gets ugly. But you're still breathing, so you're still fighting. Shock is the silent killer that shows up while you're busy congratulating yourself for stopping the bleeding. Your body is freaking out at a cellular level. Blood pressure drops, heart rate spikes, and your brain starts rationing resources to vital organs only. You get cold, clammy skin, rapid, shallow breathing, confusion, and eventually unconsciousness. Combat this by lying down with your legs elevated, if possible, conserving heat with whatever covering you have, and staying hydrated if you can drink without vomiting. Small sips of clean water if you've got it. If you're treating someone else and they're going into shock, keep them talking, keep them conscious, because once they slip away, they might not come back. Pain management is gonna be whatever you can find. Alcohol works as a disinfectant, and if you drink enough of it, as a crude anesthetic, but it also dehydrates you and thins your blood, so use it sparingly. 
If you've stockpiled medications, ibuprofen or acetaminophen is better than nothing. Avoid aspirin because it interferes with clotting. Now the exit wound, if there is one. The bullet might still be inside you or it might have passed through completely. An exit wound is usually larger, more ragged because the bullet has tumbled and deformed and is carrying bits of tissue with it. Treat it the same as the entry wound. Pressure, covering, elevation if applicable. Two holes means two problems, but it also means the bullet isn't fragmenting inside you, so that's something. The infection clock starts ticking immediately. Bullets aren't sterile. They pick up fabric, dirt, bacteria, whatever they pass through on the way to you. Even if you stop the bleeding and stabilized, in the next 24 to 72 hours, bacteria are going to colonize that wound tract and start throwing a party that ends in sepsis, fever, delirium, and death. You need to clean the wound as soon as you're stable enough to do it. Boiled water that's been cooled or the cleanest water you can find. Irrigation is better than wiping because wiping can drive bacteria deeper. If you've got honey, real honey, not the corn syrup stuff, it has antibacterial properties and has been used for wound care for thousands of years. Pack the wound lightly if it's deep. Antibiotics are worth their weight in gold now. Fish antibiotics from pet stores, veterinary supplies, anything in the amoxicillin or cephalexid family. The dosing is tricky without medical training, but a standard adult dose of amoxicillin is 500 milligrams three times a day for seven to 10 days. It's not perfect, but it's better than hoping your immune system can fight off a wound infection while you're already compromised. Watch for signs of infection religiously. Increased pain after the first day, redness spreading from the wound, warmth swelling, pus, red streaks tracking up your limb toward your torso, fever, that last one is critical. If you start running a fever three days after a gunshot wound, you're infected, and if you don't have antibiotics, your odds just dropped significantly. Keep the wound clean, change dressings daily if you can, and accept that in this new world, a survivable wound can still kill you slowly. You're going to be weak. Blood loss, shock, the energy your body is burning to heal, it all adds up. You need calories, protein, clean water, rest, you need to not get shot again while you're recovering, which means staying hidden, staying quiet, staying away from whatever situation got you shot in the first place. The psychological aftermath hits different when there's no therapy, no trauma counseling, no safe space to process what happened. You got shot. Someone tried to kill you or succeeded in trying and failed to finish the job. That rewires your brain. Hypervigilance, nightmares, the flinch response to loud noises, they're all going to show up. Acknowledge them, work through them, but don't let them make you sloppy. Paranoia keeps you alive. Panic gets you killed. This is the reality of bullet wounds after the collapse. No miraculous rescue, no clean hospital beds. Just you, your knowledge, and whatever supplies you've managed to gather or improvise. The wound is survivable if you're fast, smart, and ruthless about stopping the bleeding and preventing infection. But it's going to test everything you think you know about pain, about willpower, about what your body can endure. You're bleeding, but you're still here. And every second you buy yourself is one more second to figure out how to keep going. Press harder. Move faster. Stay conscious. The world ended, but you haven't. Not yet.